has that sound, yeah, yeah. Take these walls and rip them, rip them down. Take my, and slip them, slip them down. Robert J. Morris here. I'm going to try this. This is the third time that I've tried to make this video. I keep having uh, crashes, but I've changed some settings. Hopefully, it doesn't crash. I'm going to record this in smaller chunks and edit it all together. Anyway, I'm not trying to scare you guys with a with a picture of me. Uh, this is uh, a copy of the detainee ID card that I received when I was over in Britain, just when they transported me to the Heathrow IRC in Longford. And that was in an armored vehicle, and I was processed and just locked up for six hours before being transported back to the airport and waited another eight hours yet again uh, to be deported. Now, this might jump around a little bit, so I apologize in advance. Um, okay, what we got going on here? I'm going to start off with the documents uh, pertaining to uh, why, uh, well, my initial, the initial complaint against me uh, before I had given them uh, my 11 pages of testimony and told them exactly who to contact, what to do, like how to go about vetting my uh, claims. Anyway. Um, We'll just start right here. Uh, I am ordering your detention under powers contained in the Immigration Act 1971 or the Nationality Immigration and Asylum Act 2002. Well, we'll have to have a look at that in a little bit. But first, let's look at these reasons here. So they've, they've, they've obviously gone and checked these two boxes. And this looks like a stock laser print. It doesn't look like anybody went in there with a pen to select these it looks like they did it in in the computer itself so that th this was actually printed by the laser printer um, so either they have a stock form with these already pre-checked or they select them and then the printer prints out th what they've selected okay now that said there's a funny little notice here because okay first off B there is insufficient reliable information to decide on whether to grant you temporary admission or release okay and then you have failed to give satisfactory or reliable answers to an immigration officer's inquiries sounds pretty above board um, there is this other part C note one I believe that's my uh, fingerprint forms but anyway that's also in here now notice this though where you have these pre-selected items C your removal from the United Kingdom is imminent so when I received this paper I knew right then and there that it didn't matter what I did I don't think it would have made a lick of difference who I had uh, as my sponsor uh, how much money I had at this point because they'd already reached a decision number seven you have previously failed or refused to leave the UK when required to do so I think not bitches that was my first time there so anyway <clears throat> your case will be regularly reviewed you will be informed in writing of the outcome of the review well according to C my removal is imminent so what kind of review are you talking about? No, I I think it was clearly just uh, data mining, and uh, I think they have a room reserved for me next time I go back there. But anyway, um, those are my removal directions. Immigration Act 1971, notice of refusal of leave to enter. Um, we'll look at that very shortly just want to show you guys there's my passport and I have no problem showing this publicly because it doesn't bother me now we're, we're, we're past the point of caring uh, there's a stamp which they nicked off they cross it out so they didn't allow me access and let's continue on This is my, my, my med medical form after my medical interview uh, at the Heathrow facility. We'll look at that shortly. 
There's my itinerary. There's my five British pounds. Yeah, I got five British pounds for being locked up. That was my, uh, that's my flight number uh, for my ride home. And that's my itinerary um, for deportation, basically. And then this here is uh, first night information for, uh, for a detainee. <laughs> When someone finds themselves in detention, it can be a confusing and worrying time. No shit. Not wondering or not, not knowing what to do or who to speak to just adds to the stress you may be feeling. This document has been produced to help, you, uh, help guide you in the right direction and answer some frequently asked questions. On arrival to Heathrow IRC, you would have been booked into the center, searched, seen by a nurse, and given a mobile phone to use while you remain, while you remain at Heathrow IRC. And this phone number will be taken by staff, so you may be contacted during your time at the center. So I guess I would have got a phone if I was going to be there longer, right? Anyway, uh, this just basically goes through the whole, uh, just goes through the whole bit there. And, you know, they make it sound like it's a, a, a daycare center, really. But uh, daycare center with iron bloody doors anyway so it's a full-blown it's it's a full-blown penitentiary it's it's set up it's got ranges it's got it's got electronic gates it's got it's got everything it's got all the bells and whistles and it's meant to keep people in and uh i was you know fortunate enough to have a, a tour of the facility i guess you could say okay so uh where are we going to go with this not much uh really uh scared me except for when i was in the uh seeing a medical nurse I, I wasn't sure if they were gonna stick me with something or whatnot but i'll come back to that <clears throat> after i gave them 11 pages of testimony which i already knew wasn't going to change a, a thing I, I, I was pretty certain they had already made up their mind i just I just became very forthcoming and told them absolutely everything i told them you know my my financial history back home everything that was going on what I do and uh, my reason for being there which I told them I was going to be there to tour the countryside and travel and document my my journey and explore you know that's what I do I do that here that's what I told them I said I do, I do that here in Canada I'm going to do you know I just wanted to travel around and document stuff right so anyway here's the other thing too is when I showed up there they asked me what what I was doing, which I just basically went through, and they also asked me if I had any money. Well, I had a transfer that was pending, and because of the time zone differential, it just hadn't come into my bank account yet. However, it did later that day. While I was being incarcerated, I used their phone card to call my bank back home in Canada and confirm that the transfer had taken place. They didn't want to hear that. They didn't care. No, instead they stood behind their decision here. And um, here's the reasons. And that, like I said, this is after their observation um, of, of my uh, funds and the 11 pages. This is what they took out of those 11 pages. You claim funds of 5285 equivalent to 2,600 pounds However, you cannot provide evidence of this amount in your bank account. You stated that these funds, as well as return ticket, were paid by a friend, yet cannot provide any details to confirm this. You hold $5 Canadian cash, equivalent to two forty-seven and nine ninety dollars Canadian on a debit card, equivalent to four and a half pounds. You stated that you do not have a fixed monthly income, but earn potentially $800 to $2,000 a month. You had a September 2015 bank statement that states a balance of 112 negative. You also stated that prior to coming to the United Kingdom, you were facing eviction and could not financially support yourself through your own funds. Dickheads, I told you that I was facing eviction and then paid it off after successfully completing a construction job. But no, 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 they, uh, they only picked out the bits that they wanted to use. And I don't have those 11 pages because they kept those. Anyway, you stated that you intend to stay with a friend of whom you've never met before. Uh, it's called the Internet, dickheads and travel around the United Kingdom. You also stated that you are single, work freelance as a graphic website designer, as well as a construction worker when you require additional income. 
Yeah, guilty as charged. In light of the above, I cannot be satisfied that your financial trip is commensurate with your socioeconomic circumstances. Oh, look at you guys dropping the big three syllable words now. This calls into doubt the true intentions of your visit. This coupled with your limited ties to Canada, I cannot be sat limited, limited ties, limited ties. I'm a birth certificate. I was born here. My father's here. I've lived in every damn province just about. You fucking assholes. Anyway, yeah, limited ties my ass. I cannot be satisfied that you're genuinely seeking entry as a visitor for the limited period stated by you. In light of this, I am not satisfied that you are a genuine visitor as required by paragraph uh, V4.2, huh, 42, look at that, of Appendix 5, Immigration Rules for Visitors. You are therefore refused entry to the United Kingdom. And yeah, right, okay. And then uh, I think on the next page is just the back. Yeah, you have not sought entry under any other provisions under the immigration rules. I wonder if I should, should have claimed asylum or something. I don't know. Anyway, I therefore refuse you leave to enter the United Kingdom. Removal directions. I have given directions for your removal to Canada by flight. AC 851, which was changed because 851 got cancelled. That was at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I had to stay in lockup for another 8 hours or whatever it was. I found this out at like 6 in the morning that my 10 o'clock flight was cancelled so I got to sit there in their facility for another I don't know how however long it was 8-9 hours but anyway um, yeah uh, the contents of this notice have been explained to you in English by me who's me? me? I can't read your goddamn signature who's me? don't even write your name in there eh? Yeah, well, you know what? You're lucky because you would have been totally exposed. And by the way, Officer Clark, if you're out there and you're listening, yeah, I told you you had a shitty job. Well, guess what? Yeah, this is getting out there. You're not very good at your job. That doughy look in your eyes told me right away. You got to get a little bit harder if you want to be a good Nazi. Anyway, um... Important notice for detained persons. You may on request. You may on request have one person known to you or is who is likely to take an interest in your welfare informed at public expense as soon as practicable of your whereabouts. You should inform the home office of any change in circumstances or any other relevant information you have not already provided. Um, I had requested one person, that would be Joanne Basket. I was going to be living with her for the duration of my stay there. And she had come to the airport to meet me. And they denied her any access to me whatsoever, with the exception of one phone call. They allowed her to ring in on this uh, bat phone, as she calls it. I guess it was in the waiting room or something. And she was able to ring into the low security build, uh, facility that I was first put into. And she rang me the one time and disallowed her any other contact afterwards. And no matter what I tried to do, I couldn't get appealed. I, could, I, couldn't, I didn't have any right of appeal. I even physically asked if there was right, out of, right of appeal, and I was flat out said no. No, no, no. So I basically had to sit there and, and get pulled through these hoops. I didn't just jump through them. I, I was getting dragged through these hoops, and there wasn't a damn thing I could have done about it. I mean, I could have freaked out. Maybe I should have freaked out, and then they'd have a reason to lock me up and treat me as a combatant. I'm not sure. I didn't play that game, though. No, I just stayed calm as hell and, and kept rolling with it. detention powers for a person who has been informed on arrival that he or she is subject to examination further examination or has been refused leave to enter the United Kingdom okay there's examination further examination or has been refused leave to enter the United Kingdom or whose leave to enter has been suspended hmm so there's a couple of I don't know it's a couple of anomalies right there because if I didn't have any right of appeal then why would there even be examination or further examination 
if they've made up their mind. Obviously, somebody's not following their own rules. And this is why I'm doing this video. This isn't about, oh, woe is me, Robert spent a couple of, you know, days locked up. Oh, no, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. This has to do with how protocol is not being followed. And not to mention that, immigration services aren't even handled by the government. You'd, you'd like to think so, but they're not. They're handled by a company called Taskor Corporation. Stand by. I'm going to get all those pages together, and we'll, we'll go deeper into this. Thank you.